Call the meeting to order. It is 7.06, August 2nd. Agenda considerations. Reserved for changes to agenda items in order. We will not be changing anything tonight. Comments and questions from the public not related to the agenda. All set there. Okay. All right, so we do our, uh, we continue with a consideration of amendments to the Colchester Development Regulation Supplement 44. And we will start with A. All right. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Zachary Maya. Um, I'm the development planner for the planning and zoning department and standing in tonight for Kathy Ann LaRose, the department's director who usually uh, staffs the planning commission. Um, so this meeting is a follow up to the uh, previous planning commission meeting where the planning commission walked through a majority of these list items um, and heard from the public and considered um, whether or not these changes would be appropriate. Um, uh, I'm just going to briefly walk through the list and kind of pause after each one um, just so that, um, you know, the board can uh, jump in um, or uh, public can also, um, you know, weigh in on uh, these specific changes. Um, so 4A, um, a change to be considered in Supplement 44, uh, create new residential zoning districts, Lakeshore 3, LS3, and Lakeshore 4, LS4. Um, changes here are in uh, Chapters 3.06 and 3.07. Table A1, Table A2, um, that Table A1 is the Table of Uses, Table A2 is Dimensional Standards, and the Draft Residential Building and Types, um, which I can pull up as well to have a brief discussion. I'll pause for a moment, though, um, for any comments from the board. Okay. Yep. This is where you had a comment on our zoning. <laughs> there you go. Oh, okay. Um, was the restaurant? Yep. Yep. So um, I just would like to advocate or, but it sounds like it's already allowed in um, LS4 to conditionally permit uh, a small restaurant, a bakery, a coffee shop. And I think I heard mixed responses when we had the public here. And I've just talked to several people, not a lot of people, but they would love to be able to walk or bike uh, to a place like that. Sure. So let me go ahead and pull up the uh, table of uses here. So the table of uses uh, being amended to add in uh, Lakeshore 3 and 4 uh, districts. Um, the use that I'm hearing, Sarita, uh, is more of a short order restaurant generally. Um, tends to be the, you know, the restaurants where people have table service, um, not table service, sorry, counter service. Um, outdoor seating for a brief time, but not a lot of seating. Mm -hmm. um, and let me just find that use, all right. So that'd be uh, uses 8.120. Um, there's some alternatives in there currently for short order restaurants with no drive up service, uh, with drive up service, and with outdoor seating. Right now those are allowed in the uh, general Development 1 districts. Um, generally, they're allowed in the General Development districts, um, but mostly conditional uses. Um, so with that in mind, I'm hearing that you're interested in making it a conditional use in Lake Shores 3 and 4, or no, was just it four. just 4? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I recall some of the public... Um, some of the public engagement that went on and, you know, forming these districts recently. And there was some, uh, you know, consideration, some pushback about commercial uses in these districts. I think most of it was coming from the position of traffic and parking along East Lakeshore Drive, um, which are not two huge things that the commission has control over, um, but that is definitely a consideration for adding that use here. Um, I'd love to hear what other members uh, think about this. Um, can I just ask a clarifying question? So if they apply for conditional use, couldn't that be part of the conditional use, the amount of seating or parking or whatever? Um, because I, I also heard people saying that they really, you know, would, would like something like that. So I think it's, I, I don't think we have a really good read on, on everybody on East Lakeshore, but I think we've heard mixed opinions. Sure. So 
conditional use um, criteria for the development review board definitely touches on traffic um, and whether or not the use would have an undue adverse effect on traffic in the area. Um, with that in mind, um, it, the development review board is, is limited in their ability to um, restrict hours of operation or um, you know, impose these certain conditions, you know, some of them. Um, they, of course, can add other conditions um, related to certain criteria and the regulations. Um, there's not that much that would allow them to provide input there. Um, that being said, they, they definitely, you know, you know, parking on a site might be um, related to the size or the number of seats on the site. Um, and then, you know, the amount of seats they have might also be dictated by septic capacity on the site. Of course, that is a little bit more open-ended when you think about sewer in the area. Um, so it's definitely a, you know, a consideration. There's people on either side of it. Mm -hmm. um, I would defer to, you know, you all here to just have more of a, a, a robust, robust conversation about it um, because it definitely changes uh, the planned area um, in the future um, so compared to what it is. That's all right. You'll need to come up to the mic, though, and state your name. Oh. Yep. Whole deal. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. We will. We will yeah, we'll pull a steward one, and then we'll do it. It's Phyllis on East Lake Shore Drive. Yeah. And, uh, okay. Um, I just find it's going to be very difficult to, that, to do that, um, to have multiple more people coming in. There's already, like, about 5,000 cars that go by on that road and big semi-trucks. Um, and to try to get some place that's going to have a little... Um, a little general area for you know 12 is seating so if they're seating 12 and then the 12 that are going to seat after them are waiting and then the other ones they're just getting ready to you know I just it's just going to be very difficult I think it's going to be a little bit longer before we can say yes or no on this subject because um, it just doesn't have that accommodation up and down East Lake Shore Drive I just don't I can't even picture it I use that a lot if I'm going anyway I just can't, going up and down there, vision a spot that that could happen, except for Pete's Lakeshore variety. I mean, that's the only place that's got parking that is logical to have any place there. I mean, the guy on the corner that's got the marina, that's it. He's not going to, I mean, so I don't get if you guys are saying, like, well, an example would be, I'd like to hear an example. If you were thinking of an example, if they were thinking of an example, the people you were representing, can you give me a not, in an example yeah. of so if you what want, they were we'll, we'll go ahead, we got you. If I'm you sorry? Sit, if you want, if you're done with that, we'll continue on. We'll discuss this one ourselves, too. That way you'll hear what we have to discuss on it. Okay, okay. with that? I, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's good. No, no, no. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Well, no, because it's going to be a yep. lot longer. We, we're not going to just comment on this right now. This we is, might. This is very important. You know, <laughs> Absolutely. We've been doing this for a long time now. We've yeah, got a couple of years into it. Yeah. This is not. I'm just, so, I'm just here just checking. Gotcha. How long you've been doing it? Yeah, quite a while. Okay. Okay. I'll so we're going to go on. Rebecca, you got Sorry. thoughts on that? Well, my first thought is when we had our little public charrette, it was really just on the housing. We didn't bring up any other uses on there. And I think we're so far in the stage, that's the direction we're going. I think this particular subject, I would think, needs more input from the community on East Lake Shore Drive. I don't think we as a planning commission can right now mm -hmm. make that decision without their involvement, just like we got them involved earlier with the housing. Yep. Would that be possible? So, but not for, so probably not for this supplement though. Right, not It'd for the supplement. If we decide we like to leave it as is, but we have another supplement coming up. Mm -hmm. So in every supplement we get to put on new items which we think are important. So at this point, you're right. We have not pushed the commercial in on LS4 even because the community was pretty adamant about residential, as minimal as possible. I think that's where we ended up where we are right now. But we do have another supplement coming again right after this. Okay. Then we could bring it up. Absolutely. I'll just, I just want to just say this. I feel like on East Lake Shore Drive, um, the traffic rules people's lifestyle there, you know, the cars and automobiles, and it, it concerns me that, you know, that 
people have to get in their cars all the time to go somewhere in Colchester. You know, there's very few places where citizens in a neighborhood can walk to some place and grab a cup of coffee, or and I see it in like in Somerville, Mass, and even in smaller Vermont towns. When I'm driving through, I'm looking to see if they have a little restaurant, and and a lot of them do, you know. And it's not like they have a ton of parking, but it's more coming from a place of wanting a space where the community or the neighbors can get together. And um, and I understand your concerns. I hear your concerns, but. Um, I just, you know, I think it's unfortunate that we, you know, we have to get in a car so much in Colchester to go somewhere to get somewhere and just trying to begin to um, respect pedestrians and your the, the community where you live. Okay, thank you. The, uh, so, oh, no. so, 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 for myself, I think we are at the end for this and we have had a lot of discussion. You're right. It is a good idea, I think, in some areas. Mm -hmm. Even East Lakeshore Drive, but it would have to be for another supplement. Okay. Supplement. Only because we had so much input. You're right. We did put a big emphasis on the little shops at the time. That's my flavor at the moment. Yeah. So and then my, my gut feeling was we don't know it for both sides. Right. And and we I can have in another supplement. It doesn't even have to be included in the supplement. We can have a discussion on it. Okay. To get it if we want it to be supplement 45. Fair? Sure. All right. Thank you for Did you want one more finishing me? off? Yeah, I just wanted to just add to that. If, sure. Because um, the last statement that you had made was, um, you know, the traffic going through there. And like I said just a little bit earlier, um, how we have these semi-trucks going through that road. Um, we, I can, I'd love to see, you know, an area like that, that we could have people walking and strolling. But that's not even planned before we put this into motion. I mean, there's no walkways up and down East Lake Shore Drive. There's no walkway at all. There's no bike path on East Lake Shore Drive. There's nothing. It's just two lane roads. There's no side to pull over on or anything. So my concern would be, uh, or maybe a problem solving skill would be to think about routing all the traffic right, right down Route 7. Unless, no, really, no. But if you're going to make this a resident, I mean, a seasonal, recreational, uh, come and walk and stroll and walk your dogs sit here or sit on the side of the road, then make it not a thoroughfare. If you have the regular traffic that's going by, you know, on East Lakeshore Drive, um, shut off to the big semi trucks and all the people racing to go to work because they didn't plan their time. If they use Route 7 like they were really supposed to be, East Lakeshore Drive, I think, originally was for East Lakeshore Drive, you know, back in the old days, the old camps, the old this, people were camping. It was camps. It wasn't year-round residential. You've got more year-round residential there, people walking dogs and people renting that have dogs and animals and kids. And so, and there's no walk across. So I get, you know, South Bay. There's no walk across. I sit and I can see them. There's like a whole family with their all kinds of stuff in there. The people come up over the hill and they can't get, they're all like waiting to cross the road and the dog, you know, so anyway. So if you could do that, something about that traffic yeah. on East Lake Shore Drive, let them run on West Lake Shore Drive. It's commercial. They know they're 25. And since we've done 25 miles an hour on there, I've seen a big noticeable difference of people by 25. But the, the regular guys are passing them because they're not going fast enough. So we've got, you know, so if okay. you could get that piece, then we, uh, as people might say, we love those things there. Sure. But there's okay. no walkway, there's no bike lane, there's nothing. Great, thank you. So. Okay. Thank you, Sarita. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So do we so. have any unfinished business on this one? Yes, so um, the item here regarding under, under 4A of draft residential building types. Um, there was a draft attached uh, to this packet um, for discussion purposes. It hadn't yet been incorporated, but I did put some draft language into um, uh, Lakeshore 4 regarding it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up that table just to have a quick conversation. Um, so right now, um, the table of uses really it, in table A1 goes from single family um, or you know one family dwelling unit 
to a two-family dwelling unit to a uh, multifamily dwelling unit, which is anything three or greater. Um, and it really leaves a lot of the number of units as well as the um, design of those units and what they end up looking like um, kind of up in the air. Um, and I think that it, through some previous conversations, um, Kathy Ann had floated the idea of providing some general design standards um, to the Planning Commission and may have circulated this uh, table. Um, with that in mind, really looking at breaking out um, uh, multifamily into a couple different categories, such as townhouse, um, small multiplex, medium multiplex, and large multiplex. Um, now, noting that you know, medium multiplex and large multiplex, there's still some, some discussion to be had about what those thresholds are. Um, but small multiplex and uh, townhouse might be the place to start. So really looking at these two here, um, going into townhouse, we're looking at, um, I'm not going to read the definition here, but three to six narrow dwelling units, um, generally forming a single row of housing, um, you know, with separate entrances, front and rear yards. Um, a small multiplex being something that's, uh, you know, single detached, um, a multi-unit residential building, three or four dwelling units um, on a single lot with shared front, side, and rear yards, shared parking. Um, and potentially some areas where these uh, types of dwelling units might be allowed in. So taking a look at townhouses, um, there was some draft recommendation that these might be allowed in all residential districts except LS1 and LS3. Um, those are the Lakeshore districts closest to um, Lake Champlain. Um, and then small multiplexes being uh, appropriate in and allowed in R2, R3, LS2, LS4, and all GD districts. Now, what I've proposed here, just understanding that um, to get towards this type of regulation, um, really this belongs in table A1, um, breaking out the multifamily uh, dwelling units into um, subcategories, um, being townhouse, small to large uh, multiplexes. Um, but there does, <clears throat> there is an opportunity to uh, kind of put these into LS4 um, now. Um, through the additional standards uh, under LS4. So with that in mind, um, really allowing for uh, townhouses and multiplexes, but of course making sure that that's what um, you know, the Planning Commission's intent was there. Um, and uh, you know, starting to you know, note that those might be appropriate in LS4 um, with the understanding that in future supplements, the Planning Commission could look at these um, types of dwelling units across town. Um, so there is some draft language um, I can pull up, um, but I'd love to, you know, get some feedback from the Planning Commission on this proposal um, and just get your thoughts on it. I believe this is... Oh, oh go yeah, right ahead. I believe this is what Kathy Ann was talking about, as opposed to having <laughs> one building with a lot of units and that this is what her suggestion was. Okay, so I definitely would support that. Um, so is this table being proposed to be included in Supplement 44? No. Okay, this is just how we feel about this table at this time to incorporate it in further. So supplement? the way that I've incorporated some elements from the table let me go ahead and pull it back up. You want up. this for LS4, correct? What was that? You're looking for this for this supplement for LS4, though. Yes, only LS4. That's right. So as a way to mean? allow multifamily dwellings in LS4. It's not for the whole town. It would be only for LS4 at this time. So the verbiage would be in, um, as you said, like Table 1A with LS4 listed? S so what this will end up looking like, I can kind of walk you through here. Um, right now, so this is the proposed um, table A1 here. Um, these townhouses and small multiplexes would be considered um, multifamily dwellings. Um, so realistically, it will be either a permitted or conditional use. Um, in LS4, um, it would likely not be um, allowed in LS3. 
Um, with that in mind, uh, we'd be defining townhouse and small multiplex in the definition section of the regulations. Um, same definition that's in the table. And then in the LS4, um, uh, Lakeshore 4, 3.07 section, under additional standards, we'd be saying multifamily dwelling shall be subject to plan residential development review um, as per Article 9. Um, stating that townhouses and small multiplexes shall be permitted or subject to conditional use review in accordance with the dimensional standards established in Table A2, so dimensional standards, um, and then noting that multifamily dwelling units exceeding those limits um, would be prohibited. So really restricting multifamily development to smaller, um, uh, you know, three to six unit buildings. So if you had a large piece of property, could you have multiple small dwelling, multi-family dwelling units on the, on the site? I, I, when we've uh, looked at the density for all LS3 and LS4, um, you know, we looked at what the zoning regs would allow for density right now, how, how many people max could be there. Um, I think it was taking into account that they could put a lot more housing on a larger piece of property. Mm -hmm. So does that take that into consideration? I mean, it's So right now, what would be allowed, let me pull up uh, this table here. So. So really we'd be looking at the density of the um, district to guide how many units could be on a property. Um, with the way this is currently written, it would allow for someone who, say they could do, say a townhouse is something that is, you know, six units at most. Um, they have the density to do 12 units on a property. They could do two townhouses um, in the way this is currently written. I guess. So it's the I mean, same I always think density. of a townhouse as a single unit, and you're right. saying townhouse is more of three to six yeah. attached. Attached units. Okay, because my definition of a townhouse is a little different. Okay. Okay. So the density would stay the same. They could put multiple buildings, but no larger than a townhouse or so multiple no larger small. Than, yeah. No larger than, you know, three to six units attached um, at most, right? And then you could do another okay. townhouse right. with multiple dwellings in it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm welcome, welcome more discussion on that if you think it's, you know, something you'd want to see a harder cap on, um, like one townhouse, one multiplex. It's just a little bit, you know, this was more of a starting point to mm -hmm. think, get this sort of regulation into our, uh, into the overall regulations. I'm okay with uh, three to six, actually. For the larger properties, it works. We did not want big box, so this puts us in the right direction. So just to clarify, Rich, you'd be fine if there were, like, yeah. say there was a large property say and it had buildings. two, three to six unit buildings? You'd, okay. Yeah, I'd be all right with that. I, I think what we're thinking of is the condo building that's already on LS4. Mm -hmm. I think it has, I don't know how many units it has has probably at least six. At least six, I would say. Yeah, straight across. Um, I think that's what we are saying before was somewhat appropriate. It doesn't seem to have a, a strong impact on LS4. For that exact example, we can put in one more building at six. Yeah. Easily. They're set back, too. They are set back, yeah. Yeah, I think it sounds good. Yeah. We're all nodding yes. Oh, fellas, come on okay. up. Yeah. How far, like if you're think, thinking of that, that residence and their six units, the setback, um, so it's like, you know, like the Janet Rice place, the way she's got all her stuff and out back they're building a whole bunch of stuff out there. I don't know what they're building, but um, so 
that's going to be on the sewer system. I'm going to just say, right. and then out back on a different, it's going to all be sewer system. There, yeah, there's okay. uh, different parcels. It doesn't, it goes per parcel. So parcel, if you look at the map, parcel, on no it, matter what's on that parcel, if it needs a sewer system, if it fits on the LS4, it'll be part of this, correct? Okay. And yep. consideration they've got parking, they got everything they need. Okay. Correct. Yep, that's yep. right. I mean, that's yep, good. All right. Give another nod, yes. Okay. <laughs> so just jot some notes down. All right. So, um, Hearing a, a yes on that, um, you know, I think, you know, down the line we'll have a further conversation about that sort of regulation as it applies in future supplements. I think there's some room for more discussion on it, but I think this is a good first step to start, um, you know, engaging with those ideas. So um, any more discussion on 4A from the commission or uh, public? Somebody here. Rich? Yep. Oh, come on up. State your name, please. Hello, Rick Davey from East Lake Shore Drive. Um, I got a, just a couple of things. I think they all fall within what we're talking about with 4A right now. Um, on 306A4, it states, um, it might just be a verbiage issue, but it says through lots. Would it, do you mean just lots without the word through in it? So it's my understanding that um, a through lot is defined as, uh, in our regulations, as a lot that might have two frontages um, on two roads, perhaps. Um, there's some constrained properties on East Lakeshore Drive. Right. Um, so recognizing that, you know, um, there's still, you know, some desire to uh, favor the, the historic development pattern that's occurred out there and the ability for a, a property owner to have a residence on a lot that might be challenging to be develop. Um, so through lots are a thing in our uh, development regulations. Okay. So I believe it's intentional in this case. Okay, that's what that's what I, yeah. my question was. Um, so on B one, um, three hundred six B one, um, where you speak of demolition, uh, would it be prudent to put in abandonment also? And the only reason I bring it up is because. Um, it's very expensive to demo a property, and so some properties are just leaving their structures just to fall away into the ground over time, and they tend to be eyesores. We'd run into a problem if property taxes are paid. Even though nothing's going on to the property, we're not able to do anything about that. If you keep up on your payments, even though they've walked away from it for now, we would not have any jurisdiction to do anything about that. Okay. Um, table A2, page two. I sent these to uh, Kathy Ann this morning. <laughs> I'm sorry I was a little late. I'm get, catching up on right. stuff. Summer gets in the way. <laughs> yeah. um, so A2, page the heights. Why is uh, LS3 25 feet while LS1 and LS2 are 20 feet? So I think the question is about the height of LS3, wondering why 25 feet is proposed um, in LS3 versus uh, the 20 foot in LS1 and LS2. Has to do with the uh, ridge. Has to do with the bank. Excuse me? Has yes. to do with the bank. So the we slope. have a lot of properties that are low. We wanted to be able to get uh, two stories out of them. I believe that's where we ended up with the 25. That's what we want to, we want to be able to still do two feet, uh, two floors, right? Yeah. That's yeah. what we're looking at, two floors. But from, the bank from, is actually, most of it down below the bank, so we gave them a little bit so we could do a little fun. Okay, so we are talking about the mean, the current, where the structure is currently, the average mean of that property. Yeah. So if it's on a bank, it's down yeah. low. So you're really talking about bank houses in. But this is going to roll across all of them the ones that are up on the bank too. Yep. So, um, 
And the other piece I had was 14, table A114. Was that page 14? Um, no, in table A114, the PUD. Yes. Mm -hmm. So for the PUD for L LS3, wouldn't that be no or conditional? And because up in um, 1.8, it says no. I'm happy to provide a bit of clarity here. That's all right. <laughs> Um, so my understanding um, is that a planned unit development is really, it's, it's not a use that would normally fit in this table. Um, what it is is a type of review that a property might be eligible for through our subdivision regulations. Um, really looking at does that property have 1.5 acres of development. Um, the Lakeshore 3 properties hard to get to that number, but you know, understanding that that might still be a possibility, it's a way, it's really a different review process. Um, and understanding that just because you're allowed to do a planned unit development, um, you may not be able to develop uh, multifamily dwelling units that might be subject to planned unit development review. Um, so by having this as a permitted use in Lakeshore 3, it does not allow for multifamily housing in Lakeshore 3. Okay, so if it's very unlikely, why would we put it in? Uh, it's, it's still a review that is allowed in that district yeah. um, because it's really under Article 9 of the development regulations. Okay. And is it any, are there going to be any changes in Appendix B as far as the diagrams go? I didn't see it, it, it attached to this document. I was just curious if there were going to be any changes. It's not listed. That's why I was. And the only reason I bring it up is because of the, you know, the calculation for height is pretty critical in a lot of the what's happening with LS3 and the height issues. Sure, give me just a minute to scroll to the calculation of height in the draft language here. So just to address that, it doesn't look like there's any changes to in Appendix B related to 2.06B um, because really that section was just clarified. Um, but that being said, let me just check on the height calculation for accessory structures because um, that might be what you're yeah. referring to there. So it's my understanding that this section here in 2.09A4, 
five, detached accessory structure shall not exceed 20 feet in height except as follows. Um, that matches with Appendix B, figure two, um, measuring the 20 feet in height. Um, pitched roof accessory structure shall not exceed 25 feet in height. Uh, that also matches with Appendix B as well. Um, some of these other criteria under B through E are if certain conditions are met. Um, I don't believe that uh, there have been certain conditions to get relief from the height uh, restrictions for accessory structures um, that have not had um, uh, drawings in the appendices. Um, so there's no update at this time proposed for that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next. All right. So moving on to B, reorganization of statutory references to municipal plan, permitted uses, and conditional uses uh, to reduce redundancy. Uh, this is, starts at Chapter 1.07 and continues throughout the zoning districts. Any comments from the commission? All right. Hearing none. C, updates to process for zone change requests to align with Planning Commission policy adopted February 2022. Can be found in 2.03D. Any comments? No. All right. Clarifications and minor substantive adjustments related to dimensional standards of accessory structures, including height and placement. 2.06 and table A2. Comments or questions from the commission? We kind of just went through it a yep. bit. Oh, no, you answered my question. Okay, good. Moving on to E, minor changes to language related to accessory dwelling units. Change from use of apartment and residential unit to be consistent with statute. Clarity with respect to obtaining a wastewater permit prior to issuance of zoning permit. 2.09B and definitions to 12.02. Uh, any comments or questions from the board? Yep. Very well. F, clarify how heights of fences are measured. 2.10B. Anything on the fence? Nope. All good? Nobody's on the fence. All right. 4G, changes to status of non-conforming use status to provide for limited extension, 2.12. Okay. All right. For H, explicitly connect wastewater requirements of Chapter 4 of the Colchester Code of Ordinances to the development regulations, 2.15. systems be inspected um, prior to uh, getting a COO. And um, I, I'm just a little concerned about properties that are handed down family to family um, and may not, in this instance, would it need to be inspected in order to get a COO? So, excuse me. Um, the intent of the language here, um, and also in, I believe it's Article t uh, 11, um, is to, for, for new development um, that obtains a wastewater permit and a zoning and building permit from our department, um, so that prior to cert certifying um, that the work has been complete under a zoning and building permit, um, relevant to something that would require a wastewater permit, a new wastewater permit, um, you would need a certification letter from an engineer. Um, it would not be required in the case of someone who wants to um, enlarge a deck on a camp that their family has owned for years um, and needs to get a certificate of occupancy for that deck permit. Um, it, it would not be required in that situation, just when one is required um, if you're adding a bedroom or um, building a new structure. But for property that was passed down, I think what we're talking, and I might be way off in terms of what we're talking about, but um, 
that if they had a failing septic system, and let's say a child inherited that property, um, would they need to have that septic system inspected prior to, if it wasn't new construction, would they need to have an inspection done of that septic system before they could occupy the building? It's my understanding that, so we issue certificates of occupancy related to work under permits, um, not for transfers of ownership. Um, so there'd be no trigger for us to um, prevent occupancy um, based on a failing septic system. Now, if the septic system's failing, it might not be a great idea to, um, to live in the dwelling unit if it's actively failing. Um, you know, there's some requirements on the wastewater permitting side of things. Um, you know, we're not changing any of that tonight. Um, so really, there's, there's no situation I see where someone could um, come into ownership of a property and not be allowed to occupy it um, from the zoning uh, side of regulations, not from wastewater. Any other comments on that? No. All right. So uh, for I, update reference to building code subsection to reflect changes in chapter four of the code of ordinances, 2.17. No problem. No problem. Very well. For J, clarify that the Severance Corners form based district is the General Development 3, GD3 district, 4.03. All good. Great. For K, updates to Water Protection District to include exemptions permitted under state statute for stormwater management systems, 7.04C. For L, consider regulations uh, r related to electric vehicle charging stations as remanded from the select board as part of supplement 43, 10.01C, 7 through 9. That's the bicycle one. That is the bicycle one. That is the bicycle one. Oh, okay. Um, is this the bicycle one? It's in there. Part of the electric. Oh, uh, I know it is, but I didn't yeah. know. It. Okay, so we just we, took the bicycle out. We took out the charging station for the bicycle and okay. we moved the charging station for the cars outside instead of inside for the parking. I think it's. I mean, I just got a, a an electric bike, and there's, there's no way people are going to be able to carry that inside to charge it. I mean, or want to leave it out in the snow or no. rain to charge it, and I just think. I don't know if they can have a shed or something where people can put their bikes and be charging it. I understand that. Unfortunately, I think it's the point where we have to study that too. See okay. Exactly how many we need and another supplement comes in. Okay. That's, that's what I think. I kind of agree with you. I, think. Yeah. I, I see that point of view, but I think we're kind of like at the point moving forward. And again, it's this, you know, again, effort to get people not out of cars sure. and, you know, even traveling by electric bike. You want to so you, that. If you have an electric bike, can you plug it into a normal mm -hmm. outlet? Yeah. So people could take it up to their office and plug it in. You can't so. carry them. Yeah. Well, unless they have the They're electric. Like 50 pounds. Some take off the bike. The Some do. The yeah. Car. It's future. Okay. I got it. All right. Yeah. So for M, extend expiration period for major subdivisions and clarify rights associated with 24 BSA 4463 for subdivision plats. Changes can be found in 9.04H. For N, updates related to bicycle parking as remanded uh, from the select board as part of Supplement 43, 10.01K. That's what I thought Could go either way. Yep, we're all set. All right. There we go. Sorry. 
So 4.0, updates to commercial vehicle definitions and parking standards as remanded from the select board as part of supplement 43 can be found in 10.01M. So, was this where we decide what the truck length size. of... Uh, Number of trucks and truck size. It, and residential areas. Right. Yeah, that one, I think we, let, we said 18. Yep. Um, I, since then, I've been looking at... <laughs> <laughs> just because it's I, I, like my neighbor used to have one what have you we might want to increase that one because actually because the smallest cargo van that's what kind of we're talking about the smallest one was 16.2 feet but the average was like 19 feet 6 inches right was, they can have two of them no one I thought it was two no we, we down to two one okay yep problem we got is, and I agree, it's right on the edge. There we, comes a point where, you're right, right about There's the only two. one maker that does one that's under 18 feet. <laughs> so. yeah. Now, well, it just took a little bit on the, well, on the internet. Want, yeah, now's the time to do it if you want to go to uh, 20, which I'm I think, okay with. As long as, once we go over that number, I was where I was getting at, then we're getting to the bigger rigs. Exactly. So I was okay with anywhere from 16 to 20 at the time. So it seems like the, the major makers are these 19 foot 6 to 19. Right. That'll give you a 16 foot box. So I would say we increase that to 20 feet. Okay. And is there a height? Yeah, we restricted the height. 11, 12. I forgot what we did. There's the restriction on the height. The height is under. The height is under uh, 10.01 M4, so its um, height shall be less than 10 feet. Okay. Average. Yep. Yep. We're good with 20. All right, so I'll make that change, um, okay. and I've got a note down on here as well. All right. All right, 4B, updates to photovoltaic systems, solar collectors to be consistent with statute in Chapter 4 of the Code of Ordinances, 10.08. No further comments from the board. 4Q, updates related to non-net metered photovoltaic systems to provide for increased height and reduced screen requirements of uh, ground-mounted systems can be found in 10.08B3. For R, updates to fence and setback requirements for wind turbines, 10.09. For S, clarification related to requirements for water and wastewater permits, 11.03 B. And let me just check on that to make sure that we totally got that rounded out here. So no further questions on that one, just related to, okay. 4T, extend expiration period for zoning sign water and wastewater permits. Changes can be found in 11.05. For you, amend a definition of in to reduce number of allowed rooms and length of stay, chapter 12. So I know that uh, this one was still hanging out in front of the board. I think we want to continue it uh, to this meeting to have a further discussion on it. Yeah. Um, I have a table here that I can share. Is it 6 to 20 rooms? Yeah, so currently the zoning um, allows for um, a variety of short-term rental sort of arrangements, um, starting with bed and breakfast and working up to extended stay hotel. Um, in between that, you've got inns, which currently allow for uh, 60 or fewer units um, or rooms. Yeah. Um, and then uh, bumping that up to hotel beyond there. Um, so there was some discussion about uh, bringing down that number of 60. Um, going into the last meeting, uh, settling at you know 20 or fewer units, 
Um, but I think the board needed a little bit more time to think over that number. I know that Bob Sheck, who um, is not here tonight, um, was discussing reducing the number 20 um, down to 15. Um, so I'd love to turn it over to the board to hear more about um, you know what your uh, thoughts are on this. Any ideas on that one? I don't know. It's just a weird I one. looked up on uh, Vermont Commercial Insight for uh, ends that were for sale in Vermont. The majority of them are under 15 that were for sale. 90 percent of them. Of ends that ends that were for sale in Vermont under 15, which kind of is like a trend, I suspect. Well, that, that's not, that, those are the only ones on the market. Correct. But if you uh, think of other ends. They were like the uh, generic was where I could get dimensions. How right. Many were. But I can think of others like, you know, Woodstock, down in mm -hmm. Manchester. There's places that are called ends right. that have a huge number of rooms. So I, this whole thing of an inn an end seems like a word to cover anything from a very small establishment to a large establishment. Yep. So I think we're trying to define something that maybe in may not be, I don't know if in's the right word for it. We don't, but we allow this in LS4 and LS3, and we did not want a huge yeah. structure. No, I understand that, but yeah. <clears throat> so I understand coming up with a different word, but at this time, unless we come up with a whole new definition or, for, or different than in, can at least we can restrict it. So just to clarify, um, in will not be allowed in Lakeshore 3 and 4. Okay. It's currently allowed in, um, it's conditional in Lakeshore 1 and permitted in Lakeshore 2. We didn't allow, we didn't do a condi conditional in Lake LS4? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if we should make it more like a, a large N, a medium size N, a small N. I mean, as we're, as we're going through this stuff again, because there's different properties throughout Colchester that could probably support a large N, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and others that you don't want anything larger than a small N. So I think it needs to be further developed. But I think as a placeholder right now, I think either the 15 or 20 is a good placeholder for our so, current definition. Yeah, and I actually thought we had it conditional in LS4. So if we do not, you're right. So but what's the opposition to a bigger in like 60 rooms? If, if a hotel or in owner could fill 60 rooms, what would be, and have parking and everything, what would be? Just would they have to call it a hotel? Would it have to be a different name? I don't know. That's why I say, you know, some places are called an inn, mm -hmm. which operates as a hotel. So right. that's why I'm kind of yep. fuzzy why we, we have a definition for an inn. Mm -hmm. But if we do, maybe we divide it up. So yes. uh, we can make it for different zoning areas where it's appropriate. Yeah. Especially and, at 60, we're, we're yeah. the 60? difference between an inn. Hotel, if they're both doing 60, is the name. Yeah. Just about. Right. So, what, so what are the guidelines for Lakeshore? The, the inn on Lakeshore? There is no inn right now on Lakeshore. Oh, no, but that's that little one that was built a few years ago, the little red one. Yep, red and brick, uh, Airbnb. Yeah, so how many are in that? Do you know? Three, I believe. Three there. So that's three. Yeah. All parking out front there are three of them. Yep. Which one are we? Is this on LS4? That's LS. One. So on the lake side, headed oh, across the from Bayside Park, just down. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. No. You had a comment? So my comment was just going to be that um, in terms of creating these different, you know, approaches to, you know, these hotel arrangements, whether they're, you know, smaller or larger, um, you know, my read of what's currently in uh, Table A1 right now is that, um, you know, you have hotels and um, motels that are allowed in certain districts. And one distinguishing factor here is that a hotel is conditional use in Lakeshore 2. Um, an inn, which is, you know, a hotel doesn't have any threshold, um, whereas an inn is the maximum 60 units, is, um, you know, permitted in Lakeshore 2. So you're seeing kind of a, something that was, you know, 
you can infer that it might be more appropriate to have a smaller accommodation there, smaller being the threshold at 60 units. Um, so Rebecca, what I'm hearing, what I've jotted down is just maybe saying maybe there's a lower threshold in addition to that um, for well, consideration I, in other districts. Well, you have it permitted, right? In, no, it's hard to read this thing. I can, let me zoom in. So we made it, there you go. So that's hotel and motel, as well as commercial. Okay. So I, th I thought I saw it in commercial, okay. So yep. we have it uh, as an in for LS1 and LS2. That's conditional on LS1, permitted on LS2. Nothing for LS3 and LS4, because we're getting her against the commercial as much as possible. No, I was, just, I was thinking, you know, in areas like commercial, uh, It's not even permitted in commercial. So it, it would be con hotels, motels, and extended stays would be conditional in, in commercial. You're right. Interesting. I think. It's, I, I don't know why. It's, I, one, it's almost like, like it was uh, put in there just for LS2. I don't know. Yeah. That's not new. No. That's not new. But that's the only place it's permitted. Yeah. Which is fine. It definitely fits in. But well, even in, we even in LS2, I don't think you want 60. No, correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I agree that for tonight, 20. And then look at it again in the future. Gets us started. That's fine. Think so. Yeah, so it reduces it down from 60 to 20. Sure, so. Exit now. Yeah. I, mean, I think we heard from the public when we had some public input that they really didn't want yeah. like big development. And if they want, they could go the whole route with the motel. Mm -hmm. hotel. Sure, so I'm hearing a consensus around 20 units, um, not quite 15, but lowering 60 down to 20 for now. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. So 4V, amend definition of excavation to exclude work exempt from or authorized under state permitting, Chapter 12. Any comments or questions from the commission? Sure, let me go ahead and scroll Thank down you. to that definition here. Thank you. So the purpose of the change here is previously we defined excavation as any breaking of ground um, and gave an exemption to common household gardening and ground care. Um, it, the one point to distinguish here that we wanted to add in and really make clear is that the installation of a wastewater system that's been approved um, under a separate wastewater permit um, is not something that we can require a permit under the development regulations for um, because it's already permitted under the state wastewater program. Um, so this was just to really add some clarity to what is already the procedure um, from a legal standpoint for the town. For W, various non-substantive grammatical and organizational adjustments. All right, yeah. you're all good there. Yeah, and then changes to the zoning map, including changes to residential two, in order to create Lakeshore three and Lakeshore four districts. Um, any comments or questions about the map from the commission? I think I know what your triangle you're talking yeah, about. It's right here. <laughs> so it's the the one out here, right? Yeah, I 
Yeah, one it's out like, here. Where is that? Is that here? Oh. Oh, way out there. <laughs> I never noticed that. So, like, is that near water? It's my understanding that that's an error. Oh. Um, <laughs> Good call. <laughs> Thank you for catching it. Um, I think we, um, I'm not sure why that is a, I'm not sure why that is there. It's kind of in the middle of the 89 right of way. Um, so it might not actually be a parcel. It might have been something that um, that does not exist. But we can go ahead and clean that up um, and make sure that it's not included in the zoning change. It's in Lakeshore somewhere. I didn't know about that. No, no, no underground at the base of Lone Pine campsites. <laughs> okay. Oh, come on up. I'm just curious uh, when you go down to closer to the corner, there's a development there already. Wouldn't it make sense to include that into LS4 also? Are you talking about this one right here? Yeah. Okay. So just to, just to clarify, that is currently zoned as Lakeshore 2. Yeah. Yeah. So it's under the previous. Yeah. Yeah. So it's under the basic same guidelines of LS4. But that's why I was just wondering, maybe that's, yeah, so you're just rolling it over. Yeah, I just came around the corner, and honestly, I'm not, I don't remember why they stopped there. Yeah. It was a little bit before my time. I just thought a bit more in the character of LS4. Yeah. What was going on. So. Yeah, I don't think the difference in the zoning is going to make any difference to that neighborhood. Are you looking at the land structure that you're seeing there? Is that your Yeah. Yeah, right there. Because that's where I am. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say that's where you are. Yeah, and that's not going to be, there won't be no changes there. No. That'll make a difference to that neighborhood. Because isn't, LS2 does include um, some commercial. Right? It does, but that's, still, that's still the zone R zone. Yeah. 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 It does. But that's still zoned R2. Yes, and uh, also to note, I believe Churchill Lane um, does have a, a planned unit development um, you know, approval on record as well. So there's um, some residential, you know, very residential limitations on what can be done on that property in specific. concludes the list. All right, so now we're on to uh, regulations, supplement 44 time on Sure, so I can just give a little bit of insight here, but um, the next steps uh, would be at the Planning Commission's um, August 16th meeting. Um, we'll go ahead and get a draft cleaned up, um, just inclusive of everything we've heard, you know, up to tonight. Um, as a, a draft that would be compiled for a, a warning. Um, it'll include all of the changes um, beyond just the text, so we'll get make sure all the tables, tables A1 and A2 are updated and included. Um, we'll make sure the definitions are, of course, updated. Um, and we'll go ahead and um, you know get that draft ready for your review at that meeting. Um, the action that you might take at that meeting would be to um, uh, approve the draft for a war uh, warrant hearing. Um, we'd be scheduling that out to the second meeting in September, likely, um, just in order to give staff time to get, uh, you know, the warning in the seven days, which is the paper of record that we're using. Um, and then beyond that, um, the draft will go to the select board. So we're probably looking at closer to an end of year um, time frame because the select board, you know, can't take action on it for 30 days once they receive it, um, but they have to act on it within 120, I believe. So. Um, there's definitely some more steps in the way here uh, for, for the Planning Commission, but you know things are definitely wrapping up with this, and staff's next step will be to give you that draft. Okay, beautiful. All right, we need a motion for approval of the minutes. I make the motion that we approve the minutes of July 19th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Something else? Just Go ahead. I have a 
question about, but this is not related to planning, but to energy committee. Our role is the energy committee. Just, and I don't know exactly, I don't, can we, can we get clarification about? Sure. Um, we'll have Kathy look into it and let us know where we're at. Perfect. For sure. Yeah, I can I can see if we can put an agenda item on the next meeting regarding that. Yep. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Okay, now we need a motion for adjournment. I'm making a motion to adjourn. And second. Second. Okay. All right. Thank you again. Okay.